uh, I wasn't a dirty driver, but I was definitely very aggressive. And uh, when I came to Europe, I know a lot of the people like didn't like it when I was behind them because they were always scared I would do something silly. Welcome back to PodX. This is Ayush Kuchiti, your host, back with another podcast, which will be co-hosted by my dear friend Dhruv Gadre, who is deeply passionate about racing and motorsports. Our guest for today needs no introduction. He's an Indian racing driver, Jihan Daruwala. Jihan is a Red Bull race, Red Bull Junior who races for Carlin in the FIA Formula 2 Championship. He's a Mumbai car who has risen through the motorsport ranks and has achieved so much along the way, from inspiring many young Indians to coming third in the Formula 3. Jihan has achieved countless wins as well as podiums and maybe some F1 podiums in the future. So Jihan, thank you so much for joining in. Dhruv and I are really excited to have you. Yeah, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. So, you know, I wanted to start off with by, could you tell us a bit about telling how you got into motorsport and whether, you know, your parents encouraged you to take up karting or like, how is it about the motorsport, the whole story about that? Uh, I used to always watch Formula 1 when I was on TV when I was young. Uh, to be honest, I didn't really know of much scope of racing in India. So, it was more just the passion of watching uh, motorsports on TV other than anything. Uh, then when I was like nine years old, uh, Rayamon Banerjee was holding like a, a training camp in Pawai. And uh, I actually had exams on Monday from school and it was like on Saturday and Sunday. So I had a bit of a thing to do for my mom to let me go. But uh, yeah, after I went there, he saw a lot of potential in me. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to take it up, uh, you know, as a, as a, oh, not as a career, but at least see how I get on in the Indian Championship. And that's all how it really started. So I started when I was like 10 years old in, in India. And uh, I raced India first for a couple of years and then slowly moved to Asia and to Europe. So you started karting when you were 10, right? Like, isn't that considered yeah. quite late? Like most often people start when they're about six or seven. Yeah, definitely. I think 10 is, 10 is on the late side. Uh, I think if, if you can, uh, people even start like four or five when uh, they are in Europe. So yeah. But, I did plenty of karting from when I started to when I finished karting. So I think yeah, I did a lot of catching up in those years. Um, so basically, uh, you I'm, I'm not much into racing because I've read about it and a lot. But do they like if they start at five, six, or seven? How do they like know that they want to make it a career? So I mean, I, I mean, I'm genuinely curious about that part. Like, I if think, either. Yeah, I think it's just if you start at five or six, I think it's more push from like the the parents side. To, so it, uh, you just see how you get on and if you enjoy it then you stay in and then you just have an advantage because you started earlier so, so how did you find sport. the karting scene in India like was it competitive or were you like one of the best throughout your childhood yeah. uh, I, I guess yeah, any championship like the to win is very difficult uh, so the guys over in the top three it was pretty competitive but uh, yeah the rest of it uh, not not so great uh, yeah, in Europe, you have like 50 people who are as competitive relative to like three people in India. So, yeah, the, the level is a lot higher. Uh, and did karting in India require a lot of financial backing? Or were you offered a sponsorship from a young age because of your talent? Uh, no, I think it's very difficult to get sponsors. Even mm-hmm. in Formula 2, it's very But like, like, let's say, for example, I don't have the financial backing. Is it a route into the sport for someone like me? Or is starting out with a bit of help always the best option? Yeah, I think uh, I think it's really difficult in the sport. Uh, in the sport. Unfortunately, it's the truth that uh, yeah, you need some sort of backing or, you know, to get to a high level. Not only really that, because it requires a lot of testing, uh, a lot of, yeah. Uh, testing, a lot of flying, a lot of traveling, everything which costs money. So at the end of the day, uh, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, in a sport like racing, it's a known fact that yeah, you have to have some sort of backing uh, to go all the way to Formula One. You know, there was like this thing which I was really fascinated about by racing. So I, I've actually had a F three race on my podcast earlier. I don't know if you know him. Do you know Lee Keshav? Uh, I've heard the name. Yeah. Yeah, so he was on my podcast earlier and I spoke to him also about this, which is like, uh, he told me this thing where 
uh, racers have to also physically train. It's not just when you practice racing and also like um, I was curious about like how is it important and what do you practice and what were the training things like what happens in that thing? Uh, yeah, I guess uh, when we get to Formula Two, especially uh, you know they have a testing. Back. We're only allowed to test the car for six days in a year. The rest of it only on race. These cars are very physically demanding, especially on G force on your neck and stuff. So, I, I train like uh, five to six days a week. Uh, <clears throat> because if you don't, train, it's possible to drive. Uh, I mean, it looks easy outside, but uh, steering wheel is firstly heavy and uh, a lot of G force. So, if you're not strong, it's super hard to drive. Mind you know. Yeah, does the G-force impact your neck a lot and how do you train that part specifically? Yeah, it does. Uh, I have a special uh, neck harness which I use to train my neck. It's called a, a GS trainer. It's uh, specifically designed for us to train our necks. So, not only for Formula 1 drivers, but like rugby players and boxers and stuff also train their necks with, with the same harness. So, uh, we use it to move. That's the only way to really build up the strength in the neck. But uh, yeah, if, if if you don't do it, your neck's gonna like, hang off if you don't. Do it. Yeah, I, I mean, I want to uh, say this thing for the audience that does know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think G-force is like um basically when you're in a race car and you're traveling at such high speeds and you suddenly take these turns, your body it's like inertia. Your body is in one position and your neck goes this way, which you, like in an opposite direction. Which is why they train the neck. Is that what G-force is exactly? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, it's because uh, the rest of your body is like strapped in with seat belts, so it doesn't really move because they're super tight. But your neck is like really so. If you didn't train your neck and you turned into a left turn, the neck would just fall to the right side. So we need we need to train them uh, super hard. And did it impact you in karting as well, or was it only in single seaters that it's an issue? Uh, not really. But, uh, I was too young to think about all like fitness and stuff too much, to be honest. I, I just enjoyed driving. Uh, also in karting, I did so much karting in a year that, uh, you know, I had almost no time to train. I was in a go-kart over 100 days in a year. So it became a workout. Yeah, the rest of the time I was. So like you said, you karted a lot as a child. So how did you manage to juggle your sports and school together? Uh, firstly, it was good because I, I never really liked school, so it was good to get away. But uh, yeah, I, I managed a lot because yeah, I was barely, barely at school. But yeah, I was not an A grader, but I just did enough to pass my exam. Yeah. Sorry. So after that, were you homeschooled or were you like in physical school throughout? So until uh, nine thousand Bombay Scottish in India, and then, uh, I came here and I did my GCSE in UK. And after that, I did like so. Uh, I did homeschool after that. Wait, I mean, this is like a bit off, but how, how does like homeschool experience feel? I mean, is it fun? Is it bad? Or what, what is it like? Uh, I guess I, I liked it because I used the time I wanted to just uh, when, I, when I'm in a uh, like in sport, like. Uh, uh, possible to go to school and attend school because you have any time. Uh, but uh, let's do this way. I'm glad I finished studying now and I can only focus on that. Yeah. So how old were you when you knew you wanted to become like a racing driver or take the sport uh, competitively? I around 13 years old when I got selected in the Force India one in a billion hunt and uh, yeah I made a choice to to shift to the UK and come here to boarding school. I think uh, that's when I made the choice to really take it up professionally. So for the India so, 1 million, was it a single seat tournament or was it still karting? It was karting. Yeah. Okay. Karting. I'm very, very curious about this, which is, you know, racing is kind of, it, it is a sense of team sport, like, uh, because you have like, okay, oh, there's another player in the team, but then also you're like comp competing for your own self so that you can win the trophy and all that stuff. But then there's another team aspect where, you know, which they change your tires, they help you with the engine out and all that stuff. So, like, what would you say is racing more like a team sport or is it like a solo game? And, like, what have you learned from it? So, uh, you know, up until Formula 2, uh, 
apparently from your one actually you're not getting paid in formula one you get to drive uh, and interact with the team like uh, in formula two you bring your own budget you bring your own sponsors so yeah at the end of the day you're racing for yourself uh, so you're not racing for your teammates so both of you all are like rivals but I would definitely say it's a team sport because uh, without uh, like the rest of the team, apart from my teammate, we all work together to achieve, uh, you know, to have the best possible car, to have quick pit stops, to have right strategy. So, yeah, I'd say the team sport, my team is like how it works in. But you know, I wanted to ask you this thing, which is, um, so I was actually watching the movie, I, I think it was Rush or I think Ford versus Ferrari, either of them, I don't remember, um, which is where basically what happens is the player, uh, one of the crew members actually cheats to like make the other people, uh, the other crew think that they forgot to put something, a car part missed out or something. So does that actually happen in racing where the crew team, or what's the dark side of racing, I would say? Is there like a dark side or something? Uh... Not really, you know, in this day and age, everything is so strict and they can see everything. So, uh, no one really tries to cheat uh, in terms of, like, uh, screw each other over. But uh, there are always gray areas in terms of car performance and stuff. So, everyone tries to maximize and get as close to the limit as possible all the time. So, sometimes, yeah, you, you, you get close to the legal limit, but never try to, like, uh, go over. Going back to your karting days... Did you ever consider yourself to be a dirty driver or were you always on the safe side? Uh, I wasn't a dirty driver, but I was definitely very aggressive. And uh, when I came to Europe, I know a lot of the people like didn't like it when I was behind them because they were always scared I would do something silly. And that reputation to have. They would, they would get out of my way if I was behind them. But I mean... Um... Outside of racing, uh, what do you think has that impact? That kind of, um, are you aggressive, like in terms of achieving what you want, even outside racing? I would, I would ask that first. Uh, to be honest, I don't want to achieve anything apart from my my racing career. So, apart from uh, just be a nice guy and live a nice life, I don't want to do anything else. So, uh, uh, I'm definitely not aggressive. I'm really like cool and calm. I don't let anything get to me, and that's just how I've been since I was young. Okay, then I want to ask you this: How do you balance both, like being aggressive and field, and at the very next moment you come out of that high of pacing and you're back off track, and then you just become calm and cool? Because I've even seen your other interviews, and all you're really calm even after winning. You are calm, and how do you do that? Uh, I think it's just. Uh, like I said, it's just how I am. I don't get too excited even when I win. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I just feel like I win. When I win. I, I want to be winning, so it's something like okay, I should be happy about. But uh, you know, not something like I'm world champion. I feel like I have a, a goal to work towards. So winning is just part of the process. And even when I when I lose, I do get angry in the car in the helmet, but. <laughs> I try to just be calm uh, when I get out, uh, leave my emotions all at the track and on the surface. How do you control your yeah, like, I, in the car? Like, it must get pretty heated in there, right? Like, uh, yeah, it is very heated. I don't think I control it a lot in the car, but I uh, I don't only come on the radio, but uh, probably if people heard any radio uh, uh, comments while they like drive, yeah, you're, yeah. you're quite hard on your abusing yourself or like like, what an idiot stuff but yeah you don't really see it on the radio you have to stay composed in the car like you can't let your emotions get the better of you yeah Uh, sometimes it's good to get fired up but yeah Yeah. not like not crazy but do you do you get hard on yourself when you lose or you just accept the loss at that Uh, yeah I'm pretty hard on myself Uh, not only if I win or lose but just uh you know, if if I didn't do the job that I thought I could do, or if I made too many mistakes while I drove, then yeah, I'm pretty hard. Uh, yeah, racing is a sport where there's many times that you think like, uh, you know, you don't want to carry on and you've had enough, but you know, it's always worth uh, worth pushing and keep going till uh, you feel better and give something. 
you know, another question which just popped up in my mind was uh, basically when you're racing, when you're traveling at that level of that high speed and all that stuff, even your body will be at a whole rush. You are that whole. You're at a whole new level of high, I would say. Because even, I, I can't relate to it exactly in a racing way, but I would say even when I'm cycling really fast or whatever happens, it feels really good. And then when you stop, it kind of like feels lowering and also how do you manage that high and then coming out of that high and going back to that low? That uh, rush of adrenaline, how would you take it? I think so. Uh... I don't know, it's hard to say. It just sort of comes naturally to me now. Uh, you know, even though you're traveling at such high speeds and doing everything at such high speed, I feel like uh, I have time to do everything. Like, uh, like you know, I, every corner I have time to talk about every corner, take the zone, every time I'm picking up the throttle. So, that's true. Like, you just do uh, like, simulation mode or like your subconscious when you're, when you're driving and uh, you know it all just flows uh, quite easily is uh... do you ever think about the consequences of what going into a corner fast could be uh, not really uh, to be honest nowadays because of the safety levels and stuff we take uh, everything for granted so uh, it was not too good like uh, you know, you know, like if you crash, okay, like okay, it's fine. Worst case, cars gonna be damaged, but nothing's gonna happen to me. So hopefully, nothing's gonna happen to me. But uh, yeah, so a lot of drivers take a lot of risks nowadays to you know try to optimize the performance of the car, and uh, this is how the how the game works. You know, if 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 it was uh, say more risky, or then people would take less risks. So it just works, uh, you know, both ways. I find it very scary to be honest with you. Like, um, even when I watch these racing movies and all that stuff, like, you see the car crash, they burn completely, and all that. Hey, do you get scared? Would you be scared of it? Not scared, no. <laughs> I was scared I wouldn't be doing it. Favorite part of the sport? Is it the adrenaline or is it the feeling of winning? Or what did you say you like about it? Uh, I don't know. It's hard. Uh, very hard to describe like to drive a, a race car like a Formula 2 car is the fastest car driven but uh, you know to drive those just uh, on the limit on a track where there's so much freedom where you can do what you want and express yourself I think uh, yeah it just gives me a lot of attention speed downpour everything this yeah it gives me a, a higher for general but you, you know what I like really about you, which I've noticed, even in this conversation, I've seen a couple of other interviews and the posts you put up and all that. You can, I, I really love the way you kind of have that, I would say a warrior kind of mindset, which is because you're hard on the field, but you know how to control yourself, which is something which is very rare in the times that we find it. And that's self-control, I would say, because I, I have a lack of self-control, I can say that. <laughs> Which almost I think everyone suffers from, and I, I want. I'm curious about this. How do you do it? How do you get that self control? How do you get into that warrior mentality? I don't know. Uh, it's true. Like uh, when we do go on, I have few few close friends, but uh, off the track who I compete with. But yeah, when we're on track, yeah, we're like say like twenty indicators trying to all win and come out on top. But uh, that's just how it goes. I think if you don't have insight like that, if you keep the best, then I don't think you can make it to the top. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and so when things are not going well, you always blame the machinery and not yourself. You always think like you know, you're the best, but sometimes it's not how it works. But uh, you need that kind of confidence deep in yourself, and only then you can really make it to the top. Drivers accept their mistakes or do they, you know, blame the team or blame the car? Uh, I think, uh, you know, at a level like, uh, till you get to Formula 1, it's not really the team blames you and you try to blame them, but, uh, you know, it's... You yeah, like a learning curve. Yeah, it's like, uh, yeah, I think sometimes, uh, you know, it works both ways. There can be times when uh, it's the team's fault or your fault, but... Uh, all that no stays within the team. Uh, you kind of just—it's a team effort. And you take it both. 
Right, perfect. So, you know, Jan, another thing was um, brand. Uh, I think brand value is very, very important career it is. So, how do you think, how do you focus on building a personal brand aside from the racing part of it? Because obviously you're a racer and all you do get brand deals for that. But aside from that, how do you think should people be working towards that? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I guess I have like a, uh, a team of people who work for me, you know, to... Uh, to, uh, to do this kind of stuff. Uh, I really try to not get uh, too involved in the like the formation and the way things get organized but you know I'm always willing to to do, do things to up my brand value because I know that at the end of the day uh, the sport is only not about driving fast it's about having uh, you know a brand behind you a value of you as a person so yeah you have to play, uh, play the cards right and uh, you know, that's how it works in most sports nowadays. Yeah, but okay, Jan, how important do you think is building brand? Like, uh, apart from racing, like you said, it doesn't just depend on speed, it also depends on brands. So, do you think there's a possibility that if there's someone who has more brand value versus someone who is a slow racer, who would they choose? Like, if there's a slow racer, more brand value, fast racer, less brand value, and like the difference in their speed isn't much, who would they choose? Like, how does it work? Uh, I think if the speed is close, obviously the person has more brand value, but uh, it's still hot, fast, and if you're fast, you can. So, uh, if you had a, yeah, I would probably take the, the faster driver than the one having more brand value. But like, it also d- depends on how much money they bring to the table, right? Like, I won't name names, but in F1, there are seats where the slower driver has gotten preference over the faster driver. Yeah, also, but, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, person finishes, like, uh, in the top three or four in Formula 2, I think, always deserves to go to Formula 1. You know, uh, from a team side, also in Formula 1, if a driver is bringing, like, uh, say, X million, uh, another driver can probably drive the same car one or two tenths quicker than the guy who's bringing money. But if you can make the car one second faster by bringing that much money, then it's always, you know, it's worth it, so. It makes sense from a team point of view as well. But you know, was there like a point in your career where you were questioning your uh, you joining racing? Did you feel like quitting or what was it like? Uh, no, I don't think I've questioned why I joined racing or anything. But yeah, there has been uh, times where yeah, it's been really hard and you don't feel like doing it anymore because it's a lot of pressure week in, week out and uh, at the end of the day it's all worth it. Uh, all Have this you stuff. thought about quitting? Like was there a point where you're like I don't think I should do this anymore? No, no. I've not come to that point. No. So you're always focused on your goal, right? Yeah. I focus as much as I, I want to focus and I need to focus but I also I don't forget that I, I got into racing because I enjoy the sport and I want to have fun. So, yeah, sometimes I need to kick myself and tell myself to have fun because when you're not winning and you're not doing well, the fun really stops. Yeah. Like, how would you find the competition in Formula 2 compared to last year or Formula 3 itself? Honestly, uh, the level is high in whatever category you're going to be doing from Formula, from karting to Formula 4, uh, Formula 2. All the drivers who are at the top, they're all top drivers. So, yeah, the level is going to be high now. Next year, in 10 years' time, is always going to be high. So, uh, you know, the, the you're facing the top junior drivers in the world all trying to go to Formula 1. So, yeah, it's never going to be hey, Jan, now we have a bunch of fan questions for you. So, like, we asked a couple of our friends if they had any questions for you. So, these are, like, rapid fire. Whatever comes out in your mind first, you just say it straight away. Okay. So, I'll start. So, I'll start. Are you sure? Okay. Jan, who's your best friend on the grid? Uh, Marcus and you. Your favorite okay. holiday destination? Bombay. <laughs> but Somewhere then you live in Bombay. I don't live in Bombay. I go there on holiday now. So, it's considered <laughs> my holiday. Fair enough, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, this is a very funny question and an odd one to ask. But your favorite character from Lion King? I don't know what that means. 
What is that? Uh, that bad line is. Ka. What is? Ka. Yeah. Okay. Uh, your favorite road car? Uh, Lambo Aventro. Which track did you grow up? Which track did you grow up karting on? In Kolhapur, there's a track. Uh, it was, uh, yeah, I think in Kolhapur. I don't remember the name now, but I used to always go there. Okay. Uh, favorite sport outside of F1? Oh, difficult thing nowadays. I would just say cricket. Who do you support in IPL? In IPL? Yeah. Uh, a stupid question. <laughs> okay, um, this one's going to be an interesting one. Do you hate it when your second name is mispronounced? No, I really don't care. So you're just used to it now. Isn't it? It's mispronounced more than it's abroad, so I just give up now. What is the correct way to pronounce it? No, Daruwala. Oh, uh, your favorite song and your favorite artist. Honestly, it's a bad question for me because I'm not a fan of music. I mean, I like music, but I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I just this is what I was playing. I'm not really fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who's the most famous athlete you've met? Oh, uh, Virat. Who's well, the that most fun. athlete who follows you on Instagram? Uh, Lando Norris. Are you guys friends? Like, are you close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You all game together, right? I think I've watched a few of his videos. Yeah, he made when we were younger. Which games do you play? Uh, FIFA and F1 on PlayStation. Okay, and the last one, your favorite overtake? I don't know. I think my recent one in Sochi, my double overtake on push and yeah, push yeah, probably that That's one. Really good one. Okay, Jihan, thank you so much for joining in. Do you have any last advice for anyone who's watching this podcast or listening to it? Uh, I think I always give people the same advice as uh, like for athletes and stuff. Uh, like for me, the main thing was I I got into racing because I I had I used to have fun and get make me excited and uh, sometimes along the way everything gets very serious and you forget to have fun and that's one thing that shouldn't happen you know you should always remember you got into it because you want to have fun and enjoy the sport so only if you have fun will you ever do well so that's the only advice thank you so much for joining in Jihan we had an amazing time having you thank you I had a lot of fun